spring is officially here and we are all shaking off the cabin fever. It is time to get outside and enjoy the simple pleasures in life, such as sunshine, the sound of birds returning from the south, and the first buds of spring. One of the many simple pleasures that several of us enjoy is a great piece of art around the home, especially as spring cleaning and nesting for summer are things that many of us do around this time of year. So with the return of spring, it seems only fitting that we welcome back into our classic 107 studios our favorite Winnipeg artist, Jordan Van Sewell. For those of you unfamiliar with Van Sewell's art, Jordan works in ceramics and his sculptures have been described as whimsical, revealing, and profound. His works frequently offer his own view of the world around him, often with hilarious and thoughtful commentary. And it is with great pleasure that I welcome back into our Classic 107 studios, the one and only Jordan Van Sewell. Hey Jordan, it's good to have you back here. Thank you, Chris. It's always a pleasure to come into the studio. Mm -hmm. Uh, I first want to ask how things are going for you as spring has arrived and the snow is melting and slowly turning into puddles. Well, I think like most Winnipeggers, I'm I'm pretty happy that uh, that winter is over, and I don't care how long people say it was. It was long enough. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, I have that hope springs eternal. So here we are in spring. Mm -hmm. Uh, the last time we spoke, it was in uh, November of last year, and there was a lot of changes coming down the pike. Uh, the biggest one, which had several parts attached to it, was the closure of the gallery and your shop at the Forks Market at the end of December last year. How did all of that play out? That was a wonderful four years as steward of that space at the Forks, and uh, it was really uh, an adventure that uh, I'm glad I was able to... to uh, uh, have allowed because the forks were very uh, accommodating and uh, you know it was nice to meet a new audience it was nice to revisit some of the people that were familiar with my work but uh, it really gave uh, cause to uh, get up in the morning and uh, go to the office mm -hmm. how did uh, how did the move go like how did the packing of all the ceramics and how did that work work out it was a beautiful experience it was flawless I had a couple of friends with big pickup trucks Huh. And uh, it was uh, it was like a, a conducting an orchestra, and everything was gone within a few hours. I had a few people packing things up, and it was uh, it was as if I was never there. Huh. And what did you pack the stuff in? You know, I, I've got uh, miles of bubble wrap and uh, cartons. Uh, I'm I'm getting pretty good at folding up boxes, so. <laughs> full of those. and and using packing tape. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, uh, you, as I understand it, uh, you're continuing your ceramic work at, in your home studio. Uh, can you describe your studio to us? And what does a day look like in the life of Jordan Van Sewell these days? Well, my studio is, uh, you know, a, a nice sized room that I built on the back of my house. And it was fortunate to build it on the back because I had previously had it where my living room is. So to, in the morning to go from bed to the kitchen, always meant going through the studio, which, uh, you know, hours would go by before you realize you hadn't eaten or addressed <laughs> any of the day's tasks. So now I can uh, live like a regular human being and still get in the studio before uh, anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you talk about some of the pieces that you're working on right now? Yeah, I was, um, I was reviewing the whole uh, idea of what the plague had done to... Uh, to society in particular, and uh, I put together a number of pieces depicting unwell people, and mm. uh, I was trying to uh, to add a, a a piece of humor to it because you know everybody ends up sick or had had been sick, and uh, it's something that we all go through, and it's nice to know that uh, it does come to an end. But this is just sort of a recognition of. Uh, of the shortfalls in life that uh, we all have to experience. So I've depicted that in, in a few different ways as as a uh, theme for a, for an exhibition. Mm -hmm. And what about commissions? Have you had any, had any of those? Yeah, I've been doing some good some good pieces. Uh, it, it's funny because um, I've uh, I've done a number of, of canoes in my just out of my own interest, mm. and uh, I've I've been doing a few commissions with canoes in them. And uh, one was for a, uh, uh, an enthusiast on Lake of the Woods who is part of a major cleanup. So I depicted him with a plunger instead of a, uh, a paddle. 
and the fish kind of congratulating him on his uh, on his effort. So, uh, you know, again, I, I try to uh, um, have a positive outlook on through the pieces, but at least you know continue the awareness that uh, it's all a cautionary tale. Mm-hmm. Um, in regards to commission, how does the commission? process work uh can you talk us through that process yeah how, how that you know work? it's uh, it's nice just uh in that people find me so it's people that have been they've friends have recommended me or they've seen work in other homes or something so after somebody contacts me and, and gives me an idea of what they're looking for uh i'm able to do up some pencil sketches of of what the piece might look like and include the elements that they've described to me about the uh, the uh, recipient's life and uh, <clears throat> and it's it's always a, cha- a challenge because often I haven't met these people mm-hmm. and I've been fortunate in my uh, intuitive abilities to actually I'm surprised when I do meet people that I have depicted and it looks like them so uh, <laughs> and and it has elements nuances that that are recognized as them. So as you're creating the piece, are you constantly, uh, you know, talking with the person and just no, checking in no, to see what they, uh, if they like it or? W- no, I, I, I hope they will like it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think part of it is, uh, is the, uh, the client's ability to just turn it over to the artist and leave the artist's discretion and ability to, uh, to capture whatever it is that they're, uh, th- they've, uh, they've dreamt of, mm-hmm. which is, you know, it's a, it's a, a position of responsibility because you're, uh, you're making something that is, uh, there forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, what have the reactions been like from, uh, commissioners recently? Well, most recently I've had, uh, emails from the people who've, who've got these things saying how much they enjoyed it and how much it, uh, it did capture, uh, th- the essence of, of who they are. And uh, one of the recent commissions, I had done a, um, well, actually, there's two of them where I had done the uh, spouse. So uh, each of these is a companion piece now. Ah. So it, uh, y- you know, it's like having uh, uh, a couple and uh, having it been commissioned at, with actually, you know, a year in between, or in another case, a few years in between. So, uh, you know, you, you like to be able to, uh, uh, you know, remember what the uh, feeling of that piece was, and then recapture it in the uh, in the companion piece. Mm-hmm. Uh, building on your art, I understand that there's a couple of big projects in the works. Um, could you start out by telling us about the pop up Jordan Van Sol Gallery event that is going to be happening at the Pulse Gallery? Yeah, uh, my friend Leslie at the gallery has welcomed me back and has offered uh, to do a show. Uh, which will be coming up in uh, in May, and uh, it'll be in conjunction with um, uh, a, a documentary style film that uh, a, a filmmaker by the name of uh, Nicholas Treshen had uh, contacted me, and uh, is going to cut this uh, you know essentially a, a day in the life of the artist, mm-hmm. which uh, I think will be interesting. You know, maybe we'll visit a few. Uh, places on my own urban trap line i'll <laughs> conduct uh, a bit of a workshop in the uh, in the studio and then it'll culminate with the opening at uh, at pulse gallery and when is that going to happen like is there a rough time frame for that or yeah that that opening is scheduled for the uh, 13th of may i think it is yeah yeah so it's uh, it's coming up Mm-hmm. And can yeah. talk and can you talk a little bit more about the documentary? I mean, it's a day in the life in, of an artist. Um, how is that? How has that project been going so far? Well, it's uh, it, it, it's nice to to uh, to meet someone that has the like mindedness, and uh, I think uh, the fact that Nicholas spent time in Saskatchewan, maybe it has that uh, uh, Saskatchewan sensibility. But um, uh, you know, he he's. Uh, put together a, a, an idea which will essentially follow me around and ask uh, all those hard questions that uh, the world needs answered. Mm-hmm. And uh, what, are the, what are the plans for the film? Like, is it going to be shown, like perhaps a Cinematheque? Or? Well, he, he works with a, a group called Black Watch Entertainment, and I know that there was funding from the Mother Corporation 
to put this together with the intention of uh, shopping it around at festivals and stuff. But, uh, you know, being a lowly artist, I just try and come up with those profound lines that look good on film, and then I leave the rest up to uh, the powers that be. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to wrap up the conversation by uh, asking if people want to buy a piece of art or they want to commission a piece of art from you, where can they go to do that? Yeah, it's nice to know that people are still doing that and that art is still a part, a big part of, of people's lives. And if they go online and just punch my name into a search engine, they're going to find how to contact me. And then we'll begin the process of uh, going from, uh, you know, 150 million year old clay into a pleasing uh, ceramic sculpture depicting them in their lives that will last for another 150 million years. Mm -hmm. Sounds yeah. fantastic. Jordan, as always, this has just been so much fun. Uh, thanks for taking the time to stop by our Classic 107 Studios and chat with me again today. It's good to see you. Thank you so much, Chris. Mm -hmm. For our Classic 107 listeners, I have written an article about Jordan and his art, and in the article, I have provided direct links that will provide provide you with more information about Jordan and his art and where you can go to perhaps commission a piece. You can find that by going to classic107.com. Jordan, thanks again. Thank you.